Everything is temporary, existence is meaningless, and we are crushed by capitalism. No, God, please, no! New setup, do you, do you like it? Today we're talking about the triangle of sadness and my computer already decided to go to sleep. You're welcome. It's Ruben Oshland's third film when it comes to his experience with the Cannes Film Festival. And actually, he's had an incredible career when you think about it, because in 2014 he released Force Majeure which won the jury prize in the category Un Certain Regard at the Cannes Film Festival. Are they safe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know what they're doing. A couple of years later, in 2017, he won the Palme d'Or with his film The Square, which was an incredibly weird film talking about art installations, contemporary art, of course, the art market, and people who consume it, people who make it, and people who mostly make a shit ton of money out of it. <laughs> And now, as he comes back with another film at the Cannes Festival, he wins yet another time the Palme d'Or with his new film, Triangle of Sadness. Did I enjoy it? Yeah, I had a really good time, to be honest. Suddenly I'm dressed in something way less expensive. It's H&M, yay! Balenciaga, and H&M, Balenciaga, and H&M! I got a chance to see it at the Parisian premiere a couple of days ago and the director was there that night and he dedicated that specific screening to Charlie Dean who is one of the main actresses on this film here and who tragically died a couple of weeks ago. According to the filmmaker the title makes reference to a term used by plastic surgeons to describe the worry wrinkle that occurs between the eyebrows which can be fixed actually by Botox in 15 minutes and it is actually referred in the very first few scenes of the film Itself. When we're introduced to one of the models slash influencers, we're gonna be part of the main cast. Okay, and open your mouth so you look a little bit more available. Okay, not that much, a little bit less. Okay. And this is the perfect way to actually start a movie like this because this movie here is all about appearances. It's all about how people make money from nowhere. There is, for example, like a really funny capitalist Russian oligarch who keeps saying that he sells shit. And that's what he actually sells. He built an incredible fortune selling shit that is then used in agriculture and of course he is one of my favorite characters because he really embodies that kind of generation who seems so completely out of touch from reality for example his wife at some point asks every single member of the cruise ship to go for a swim just to let you know it's not like they're not doing anything everyone is working non-stop on the specific cruise ship but of course since the client is king when it comes to this kind of luxury holidays, they have to stop everything and go for a swim. And when this happened, I, I just felt like, why? Why? Life is so unfair. Yeah. We are all equal. <laughs> that is so true. Everyone's equal. And these are really tiny examples of things that are within the film that could have sounded like cliche takedowns of rich people, of a certain class of people. But at the end of the day, everything works perfectly just because the filmmakers of Ruben Oshland actually manages to bring out humanity in every single one of these characters here. And of course, it becomes even more important. So their humanity within the third act itself, where everyone is basically stripped down of their money, the luxury equipment, their makeup and everything and they actually have to survive and they're all at the same level. Hey, hey. The ship is going 
burning anger. Funny enough, the script contrasts this capitalist Russian oligarch with the captain of the ship who seems to be kind of a socialist nihilist who spent basically the entire runtime of the film locked in his cabin, getting drunk and being completely depressed and refusing to engage with the client just because he's so completely disgusted by the amount of luxury that he's surrounded by. But it's really interesting because while he's having a conversation with the Russian oligarch, he admits that at the end of the day, even though he's a socialist, even though he talks about these big ideas, when it comes to the hierarchy that has been set up within capitalist society, he admits that he is actually incredibly privileged, that he has a lot of money and that he uses that money as he pleases, but he tries to do his best at the end of the day. Growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of a cancer son. That's Edward Abbey. Listen, the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. Ah. Margaret Thatcher. And that is something that is actually incredibly interesting to see when it comes to these kind of critiques of the most elitist societies and of the most elitist people as well. It is those people, maybe they don't define themselves as rich, but they still have way more money than people who work for minimum wage, people who would allow the children who don't have any disposable income and they cannot afford these kind of holidays. So it is really interesting to see the argument from that aspect aspect as well and at the end of the day it's really funny because when it comes to capitalism and socialism yes we have the theories themselves but we also have reality and at the end of the day even though you define yourself as someone who is almost like an anarchist or a communist person someone who fights for every single right of every single person on earth at the end of the day we're all submitted we're all slaves of capitalism if we live within big cities especially if you want to work in certain industries we have have to survive we have to make money to survive and thus we are kind of fueling the capitalist system is itself even though we don't believe in it and we don't support it so what you're saying is everything is society's fault and we as individuals never need to take responsibility for anything uh no not exactly i was just saying yeah. that I like that. I really love the idea that uh, everything is about superficiality, everything is about appearances, as I said before, but not only the physical appearances of the people who are there, but also the physical appearances of the boat itself, of the different food that is presented at the restaurants, but also of the idea of keeping the illusion going for as long as possible until it becomes completely and utterly ridiculous that everything is going fine and that everything is under control. Control. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. And this is not really a spoiler because it's present within the trailer, but also within all the summaries that I've seen online. The boat will actually go down and the people on this boat will have to escape from it and then will have to work together to survive. And the funny thing is that that specific moment when the boat is going down lasts for an incredible amount of time and everyone tries to pretend for as long as possible that everything is fine. Where you literally see the captain of the cruise ship who is standing like this and he's standing like that for like several minutes as he's greeting everyone and no one seems to react no one seems to think that that is a problem because they don't really want to acknowledge it because they have such huge egos that they can't really even admit to themselves that something is wrong because they think that someone else is going to fix it because they're not going to fix it because they are the rich people who are paying other people to do that kind of job and they are there on a holiday and it's incredibly ridiculous when you see for example where glasses which are moving left and right falling down and people keep eating and eating and there is this phrase that kept being repeated by the crew if you're feeling seasick then you should eat more you're feeling like that because you're on an empty stomach and they keep saying that keep saying that and keep saying that while everyone around them is vomiting there's entire bowels and souls on the floor The 
This movie here is kind of like the most perfect absurd satire slash comedy that I've seen in a really long time. I feel like this is definitely Ruben Oshland at his best when it comes to this kind of comedy dramas that he really likes to make. Force Majeure for example was incredibly fun and it already had those in themes that he seems to be so interested in when it comes to people being superficial and not realizing that there is so much more going on around them. But at the same time on repeated viewings I found that film kind of slow and the square of course it is a movie that is really perfect but it is kind of inaccessible because it is talking about high art it is talking about this kind of weird and complex art movements and live performances that at the end of the day if you don't have a background in that kind of subject matter I feel like the message of the film is gonna be completely go over your head and you'll be bored once again nobody exists on purpose nobody belongs anywhere everybody's gonna die come watch TV this movie here is really really universal when it comes to its message. This is one of those films that I can recommend even to my parents who usually really hate for example movies that come out of the Cannes Film Festival. This is really the opposite of pretentious even though it's incredibly well made it is talking about things that everyone can relate to. It actually reminds me a lot of Parasite that movie really united everyone across different continents across different cultures and countries and even though it was not in English of course it united everyone because the messages were so incredibly powerful and Bong Joon-ho was basically holding up a mirror to society and it was reflecting back on us with great power comes the absolute certainty that you'll turn into a right cunt what? And this is the same thing when it comes to Triangle of Sadness. It is one of those films that will be remembered for a couple of years just because it feels so perfectly on point when it comes to its critique. But it never feels cliche, it never feels superficial like its subject matter. It feels like it's hitting the nail straight on the point, but it is mostly because of the performances. The performances in this film are incredible. Whether you're talking about the main characters or whether you're talking about secondary characters or even crew members members that you see in just a couple of scenes when for example the crew members are going around the ship telling everyone to go get their swimsuits because they have to go for a swim the tiny reactions of people who are working in the kitchens people who are working down in the engine rooms they're just so incredibly funny because you can really tell how out of touch all of these elitist people are come on you enjoy the moment no 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 <laughs> What? You say no to me? No, no. Oh, so it's yes. Mm, yeah, no. And it's really funny also when you look at the dialogue, for example, and you look at the conversations that people are having. There is one that keeps coming back in my at the back of my mind, for example, and it's between the two main characters. So the two models that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, and they keep talking about money. Of course, they keep talking about money, but at the end of the day, the guy there says that it's not really about money, it's about something else, but he doesn't really know how to express it. And it's really funny because like, even though he's challenging the ideas of how men and women should behave within a relationship is also going completely against it at the same time when he is getting really vocal and angry about it and aggressive even though at the end of the day it should be a non-issue if for example the other person is not paying for your dinner even though she promised that she would and I feel like those are the two characters who are the most relatable because at the end of the day almost anyone can relate to that idea of getting at that point in your career or in your life where you feel like you're slowly stepping up the ladder and your life is getting easier and easier but you still not filthy rich of course <laughs> Because at the end of the day, the two models, the cruise was actually gifted to them, so they didn't pay a single cent out of their pockets. And I'm not even sure if they would be able to go there if they actually had to pay it for themselves. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the people who are actually surrounding them, for example, there is this really old English 
couple who is sitting at their table one night and they're talking casually about the fact that they're basically arms dealers and that they lost like 25% of their income when the UN basically banned landmines when it comes to war conflicts and it's really funny because those are not the people that you would like to associate with those kind of fortunes with those kind of really violent things but it's the reality of things at the end of the day if someone can get rich doing something they will do it it looks paid for the tickets not bad huh? <laughs> so what do you do I sell shit. We have this idea that rich people are this incredibly evil looking people. They only care about money. They don't give a shit about the environment. Talking to them will not be interesting at all because they must be so incredibly out of touch and they must be so incredibly just bad people, right? Ruben Oshland really managed to get that humanity out of them. When you get to scratch the surface and you see who is actually behind it and he's kind of disrupting the myth behind rich people and behind behind this idea that rich people must look and behave a certain way but no rich people can actually look like the most kind people ever and then they make money selling grenades do you know what people regret on their deathbed can you turn the phone I really like the idea that the director decided to take almost like an omniscient look when it comes to the ship itself. He decided to give us a glimpse of every single level of the ship itself and who works there. From the people who have to scrub the vomit from tables and floors, to the captain and the second captain, to the people who are actually carrying the food, to the people who are taking care of driving the boat, to the people who are taking care of the sales every single different kind of people is given enough time so that we can understand where they're coming from and we can also understand how deep rooted it is that idea of the american dream or that idea of changing status of changing class and becoming one of the rich people there is this really interesting moment of the crew members getting hyped just before the guests are arriving and they're basically just clapping hands and chanting money and they're jumping up and down and creating vibrations throughout the ship hello i like money <laughs> we see it from their perspective and we see it from the perspective of other crew members who are considered to be below them when it comes to their status who are just working and living their normal life and they don't even have the time to consider the idea of having a lot of tips by the hand of the holiday and those are the kind of things that make you realize how within a capitalist system everyone is out for themselves whether you are at the very top of the food chain or at the very lowest and and of course we can see that once we arrive in the third act when one of the lowest crew members that we can think of someone who is there to just scrub toilets in the cruise ship becomes actually the captain just because she's the most resourceful person there and just because she can make sure that everyone survives but even that character by the end of the film we start to understand how she's starting to act like everyone else taking advantage of the new status that she now has taking advantage of what she brings to the team what she brings to society as they know it and at the end of the day we're all the same and I don't really know whether the film ends on a positive or negative note because it is kind of cryptic and the ending is kind of open-ended about what happens and I don't really know whether I should take anything positive or necessarily negative about it this is not like a film that necessarily wants to give you the right answer and you're supposed to find it for yourself and you're supposed to figure out what the ending was like by yourself. Commençant ce film, nous n'avions qu'un but, vraiment, vraiment essayer de faire un film qui intéresse le public et qui le fasse réfléchir avec provocation. Nous voulions un loisir, nous voulions que le public se pose des questions et nous voulions qu'après la projection, le public ait quelque chose à parler. Do you actually think that people will do anything to keep their current status or to get up? 
when it comes to their status or do you think that there is something inherent when it comes to our humanity that will make us act in a virtuous way anyways those are all the thoughts that i had when it comes to triangle of sadness for me it's definitely one of my favorite films that ruben Oshland has made and i'm really glad that it's gonna get a lot of attention just because it won the palm d'Or at the Cannes festival let me know down in the comments what you thought of the film itself i think it's coming out in a couple of weeks in the states if i'm not mistaken and it's getting a national release on september 28th in france as well don't forget to like and subscribe every single like that you drop will go to the memory of child b dean because she is incredible in this film here she's one of the standout performances without a doubt and she hasn't really had the chance to get the spotlight that she deserves mainly because she's only been in two main films one that is called an interview with God and the other one don't sleep and the CW series Black Lightning and I'm pretty sure that thanks to this film her career would have exploded out of proportion and I'm really sad that she will not be able to live it. I'm Patrick and this is Torn Apart. Charlby Dean who's making her debut acting uh, performance on the big screen in the role of Yaya. Ta-da-da-da-da, ta da 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 da